Imagine facing someone three times stronger than you, built like a human tank, and literally designed by evolution to survive injuries that would kill you instantly. Now imagine that's your cousin. Meet the Neanderthals, the ultimate freaks of nature hiding in your DNA. For over 150 years, we've been getting Neanderthals completely wrong. The moment we dug up their first bones in a German cave in 1856, we branded them as brutish cavemen dim-witted evolutionary dead ends who got steamrolled by smarter humans. But stereotypes usually crumble when you dig deeper. And boy, have we been digging. Recent discoveries are painting a radically different picture of Homo neanderthalensis. These weren't primitive losers stumbling through prehistory. They were biological masterpieces engineered by evolution to dominate some of the harshest environments Earth has ever thrown at life. We're talking about beings who invented industrial processes, created art, and developed healthcare systems so advanced they'd make modern hospitals jealous. They survived bone-crushing trauma, then lived to tell the tale for decades. And the ultimate twist? They're not even extinct. Every time you look in the mirror, if your ancestors came from outside Africa, you're seeing a face that carries their genes. Part of your DNA came from these extraordinary beings. So what made Neanderthals such remarkable creatures? How did they engineer their bodies and minds to master glacial Europe? And why does their story force us to completely rewrite human evolution? Let's start with the obvious. Neanderthals looked nothing like the hunched over cavemen in museum dioramas. These beings were stockier and more robust than modern humans, but not because they were primitive. They were precision engineered for survival. Their bodies were shorter with bulky trunks and proportionally shorter arms and legs. This wasn't some evolutionary mistake. According to research from the Smithsonian's Human Origins program, this body plan minimized skin surface area relative to body volume, the perfect adaptation for conserving heat in predominantly frigid climates. But their faces tell an even more incredible story those a massive flared nasal passages that made them look so distinctive? They weren't just for show. Research suggests these large nasal cavities were biological climate control systems, humidifying and warming the bitter air of glacial Eurasia before it reached their lungs. And those prominent brow ridges that made them look so fierce? They housed something remarkable, eyes that were significantly larger than ours. Analysis of fossil data reveals that Neanderthals had adapted to the lower light levels at higher latitudes where they lived. What's truly fascinating is how their brains were organized differently from ours. Research, including studies from the University of Oxford, suggests Neanderthals allocated more brain matter to visual processing thanks to those larger eyes and more to controlling their robust bodies. Crucially, they may have had a relatively smaller cerebellum a brain region implicated in social processing and cognitive flexibility. This left different cognitive capacity for complex social processing compared to modern humans. It's not that they were less intelligent, they were differently intelligent, optimized for a world that demanded different skills. If you want to understand how incredibly tough Neanderthals were, look at their bones. Cross-sections of Neanderthal femurs show bones that were significantly thicker and more robust than ours. This wasn't just for show. It was biomechanical necessity. Archaeological evidence paints a picture that would make extreme sports athletes wince. Neanderthal skeletons show an incredibly high frequency of healed injuries, particularly to the head and neck. According to research published in multiple studies, this pattern suggests they engaged in close quarters combat with massive dangerous prey. But what's truly remarkable is that these weren't fatal injuries. These were healed injuries. Neanderthals were regularly surviving trauma that would kill most modern humans, then going on to live for years or even decades afterward. How is this possible? To put this in perspective, the average Neanderthal male stood about 5 feet 6 inches tall, or 1.68 meters, and weighed around 180 pounds, or 82 kilograms, compared to early modern humans who were typically 5 feet 9 inches, or 1.75 meters, and 150 pounds, or 68 kilograms. But those extra 30 pounds weren't fat. They were pure muscle and bone density. Put a Neanderthal, an early modern human, in an arm wrestling match, and it wouldn't even be close. We're talking about beings who could be two to three times stronger in upper body strength. 
Their robust skeleton wasn't designed to prevent injury entirely. It was designed to let them survive and recover from extreme physical trauma. Think of them as biological shock absorbers, built to take hits that would shatter a modern human and keep on going. For decades, we assumed Neanderthal technology was simple and crude. Then archaeologists discovered something that changed everything, birch tar. This isn't your backyard campfire story. Creating birch tar requires heating birch bark in an oxygen-restricted environment at precisely controlled temperatures. According to research published in the journal Sciences, this is a multi-step controlled process that demands deep understanding of material properties and thermodynamics. Why is this so important? Because it represents what scientists call cumulative cultural evolution. Knowledge wasn't just invented and forgotten, it was passed down across generations and refined over time. This was humanity's first industrial process, and Neanderthals mastered it thousands of years before modern humans arrived in Europe. A 2024 discovery in Gibraltar revealed even more sophisticated engineering. Researchers found evidence of Neanderthals creating complex hearths specifically designed to produce tar at exact temperatures. These weren't accidents or lucky breaks. These were planned, engineered solutions to complex problems. As archaeologist Clive Finlayson from the Gibraltar National Museum told Evolution News, this discovery represents another nail in the coffin for those who felt that the Neanderthal were just brutish apes. Now we enter controversial territory. For years, art and symbolic thought were considered the exclusive domain of modern humans. Then came discoveries that shattered that assumption. Neanderthals were creating personal adornment from eagle talons at sites like Krapina, Croatia, as far back as 130,000 years ago. Even more striking, perforated seashells stained with pigments and used as jewelry have been dated to 115,000 years ago at sites like Cueva de los Aviones in Spain. This predates the known arrival of modern humans in Europe by tens of thousands of years. Even more dramatic are the cave paintings in Spain at La Pasiega, Maltravieso, and Ardales. Uranium thorium dating suggests these abstract designs, including stenciled hand impressions and geometric patterns, are at least 65,000 years old, possibly reaching 80,000 years. If confirmed, this means Neanderthals were creating art before modern humans even arrived in Europe. The evidence for Neanderthal symbolism isn't limited to art. Research from multiple sites shows they collected black feathers from various bird species, possibly for aesthetic or ceremonial purposes. They used red ochre pigments, sometimes importing them from tens of kilometers away. But the debate continues. While the evidence for abstract art is strong, clear examples of figurative art depicting animals or people remain contested. Some researchers maintain skepticism about certain claims due to methodological issues. This ongoing discussion highlights just how complex and nuanced our understanding of Neanderthal cognition has become. This might be the most astonishing aspect of Neanderthal life, their healthcare system. We're not talking about basic first aid. We're talking about sophisticated long-term medical care that rivals anything in the modern world. The star patient in this story is Shanidar I, a Neanderthal male found in Iraq's Shanidar cave. His medical chart reads like a trauma surgeon's nightmare. According to research from the University of York, he suffered a violent blow to the face that left him blind or partially blind in one eye, a withered and possibly paralyzed right arm from a healed fracture, leg and foot deformities causing a painful limp and advanced degenerative joint disease. Any one of these injuries should have been a death sentence in the Stone Age. Instead, Shanidar I lived to an advanced age, somewhere between 35 and 50 years old. The only way this makes sense is if his community provided daily care, support, and protection for decades. Dr. Penny Spickens from the University of York, who has extensively studied Neanderthal healthcare, argues that this wasn't calculated self-interest, it was genuine compassion. As she noted in her research published in World Archaeology, Neanderthal healthcare was characterized by a compassionate and knowledgeable response to injury and illness. The evidence goes beyond individual cases. Analysis of Neanderthal teeth shows interproximal grooves, indicating they used toothpicks for oral hygiene. 
Dental calculus reveals they consumed bitter-tasting plants with minimal nutritional value like poplar, which contains salicylic acid, the active ingredient in aspirin. They weren't just keeping people alive, they were actively treating pain and disease. One of the biggest questions about Neanderthals has always been communication. Could they speak? Recent evidence suggests not only could they talk, but they may have been doing it for hundreds of thousands of years. Anatomical studies show that Neanderthals possessed vocal tracts and auditory pathways not significantly different from modern humans. They were physically capable of speech. But more compelling evidence comes from genetics. We know Neanderthals and modern humans interbred successfully for thousands of years. This level of sustained interaction and genetic exchange would have been extremely difficult without some form of shared or mutually intelligible communication. You don't maintain relationships across species barriers without being able to talk to each other. However, there may have been crucial differences in how their language worked. Some research based on anatomical and neurological models suggests Neanderthal brains had a relatively smaller cerebellum, a region crucial for cognitive flexibility and language processing. While they were undoubtedly capable of complex communication with words and basic syntax, these differences might have meant they developed semantic networks differently, perhaps limiting the abstract metaphorical thinking that became a hallmark of modern human language and culture. This metaphorical divide might have been a key factor in the cultural explosion we see in modern humans and potentially contributed to Neanderthal disappearance. Now comes the plot twist that changes everything. Neanderthals aren't extinct. They're sitting right there in your DNA. The first Neanderthal genome sequence in 2010 provided undeniable evidence of interbreeding. Recent research published in December 2024 has given us an incredibly precise timeline. According to analysis led by researchers at UC Berkeley, this genetic exchange began approximately 50,000 years ago and continued for about 7,000 years. This wasn't a brief encounter. It was a sustained period of mixing that fundamentally shaped modern human evolution. Today, people of non-African descent carry between 1 and 2% Neanderthal DNA. Recent studies even found small amounts of Neanderthal DNA in some sub-Saharan African populations, likely from later back migration. But what makes this really extraordinary is that those Neanderthal genes weren't evolutionary baggage. Many of them provided crucial advantages. Neanderthal genes involved in immune system function and skin pigmentation actually increased in frequency over time in modern human populations, meaning they were actively beneficial for survival in new environments. Some introgress genes are associated with conditions like celiac disease and malaria severity, suggesting complex adaptive trade-offs that continue to shape human biology today. So if Neanderthals were so perfectly adapted and sophisticated, what happened to them? Around 40,000 years ago, they vanished from the archaeological record across most of Europe. The answer isn't simple. Recent discoveries, including the 2024 analysis of Thorin, a Neanderthal found in France's Rhone Valley, suggest isolation may have played a crucial role. Despite living only two weeks' walk from other Neanderthal groups, Thorin's lineage had been genetically isolated for 50,000 years. As researcher Ludovic Slimak from the Center for Anthropobiology and Genomics of Toulouse noted, how can we imagine populations that lived for 50 millennia in isolation while they are only two weeks walk from each other? The disappearance likely resulted from multiple factors, climate change, competition with modern humans, smaller social networks, and possibly even disease transmission. Their very specialization, which made them masters of glacial Europe, may have made them less adaptable when conditions changed rapidly, but calling it extinction misses the bigger picture. Through interbreeding, Neanderthals became part of the modern human story. They didn't disappear, they merged. Neanderthals really were extraordinary beings, but not in the way we originally thought. They were biological masterpieces engineered by evolution to dominate environments that would kill modern humans in hours. They survived injuries that would cripple professional athletes, created the world's first industrial processes, developed healthcare systems based on genuine compassion, and may have been making art before we even figured out how to leave Africa. Their story forces us to completely reimagine human evolution. 
This wasn't a simple tale of superior humans replacing inferior ones. It was a complex dance of interaction, competition, and ultimately merger between two incredible human species. Every time you fight off an infection, adapt to a new climate, or show compassion to someone who can't help themselves, you might be channeling genetic wisdom that's been refined over hundreds of thousands of years by these remarkable beings. Neanderthals weren't our evolutionary dead ends. They were our partners, our teachers, and ultimately our ancestors, the extraordinary creatures who helped make us human.